What's up YouTube Universe? Today we are looking at a BMW X5 for a customer of mine. We're going to do a pre-buy inspection. We're over here of Autos of Legends in Irving, Texas. We got a lot of passerby traffic so I apologize about any background sounds. We just had a jumbo jet flying over. <laughs> like There might be a little bit of noise back here so let's go ahead and take a look. Got some oxidization. Not a bad looking vehicle. <clears throat> Let me know what you think down below. Leave a comment. I always thought that was a neat uh, addition to a stock vehicle. I wish more vehicles did this. It's actually really cool. It sucks when they break and they get destroyed, but they're great when they're working. If you take care of them, they'll last a long time. <clears throat> You got to use a uh, conditioner like so the same leather conditioner you would use for seats you could use the same stuff on this screen and it probably last twice as long All right. I like the auto feature oh cool it's got a little tailgate too look at that yeah, have tailgate parties. Right on. Alright, we got some floor mats here. Needs to be vacuumed out, but not too shabby. Let's see what we got in the compartment below. No spare tire. Okay. Now, what they were missing was something to hold this up. They need like a, a latch right here or something to hold this. Or maybe some uh, hydraulics, some struts there. That would be a good feature to add. Oh, this doesn't come up at all. All right. What's oh, in here? Okay, we got. Got an outlet there for a cigarette lighter port, 12 volts. That's cool. All right. Everything's still functional so far. <sighs> Planes are relentless. It must be next to the airport. Uh oh. Clips are gone on this side. I think they, I think you can get those replaced though. What does this do? Oh really? It's an adjustable head headrest. Okay. I see. Interesting. That's the first one of those I've ever seen. Never seen that in another BMW. Looks like your passengers will have their own control of 
The temperature's in the back seat. You got some more 12 volt ports down there. Does this come down? Yes, it sure does. Definitely still needs a little bit of a detailed job. I forgot that part. Carpet still look pretty decent. Headliner's got a couple of stains in them. Oh, and it looks like it's starting to bubble. It's already detaching. And this is, uh, oh, okay, so we got a big sunroof here. Let's check that out. Let's go ahead and put the key in. Okay. Everything's coming alive. Let's put our foot on the brake. Oh, it's got a push button start. There we go. While it's 71 degrees outside, it is starting to get a little warm in here. Let's go ahead and test out the AC. Oh, wow. My hand was resting on the shifter and it moved it forward. Don't do that. All right, so we've got some air on. Let's turn it towards us. Is that it? Where's our modes? That cannot be as high as it goes. Something ain't right here. Oh, let's get on the cold max. There we go. Make sure you hit that max, otherwise you ain't gonna feel nothing. All right, AC feels ice cold, that's good. Uh, check engine light is concerning though, so we're gonna check out that next. Bust out my trusty kit here. They won't give up. All right, we're gonna hook up to our scanner port here. OBD2. Go. Let's see what we got here. P112 Frank. Not familiar with that one. We've got catalytic converter flashing warnings, EVAP flashing warnings, O2 sensor flashing warnings, and the EGR flashing warnings. Not a good sign for this BMW. Six error codes stored. Also a P0171. P112F. P0171, P112F, that looks like a repeat code, and P0171, another repeat code. So we got six codes, and out of those six codes, it looked like three or four of them are uh, repeats. They at least had one repeat, so um, we're going to look deeper into this and uh, find out why these codes are here. So let's go ahead and start from the first one, P112F. P112F code means manifold absolute pressure to throttle angle too high, bank one. This is often caused by a bad vacuum line. A vacuum leak on the car can be caused by a couple of things. Most common is the hose that is running in the system has been damaged. If the hose has a hole in it or the hose has dry rotted, then it will leak. Yeah. Uh, also, connection points can be a failure point. Uh, if you've got brittle plastic, sometimes the nipples break off of whatever they're attached to. Um, yeah. So we'll, we'll take a look inside the engine bay. That's where we're going to find that issue. Next, we have P0171. 
I have seen this one before, but I don't remember what it is. Fuel trim system too lean. And that could be caused by a number of things. But because the O2 system is uh, warning flashings, uh, flashing warnings, um, it's probably related to the O2 sensors. They're, they're probably not heating up properly. They could just be not ready yet, so we'll let the vehicle warm up and uh, see if that code goes away. But uh, more than likely, uh, this will probably have to replace the catalytic converters and the O2 sensors. These airplanes are getting annoying. Alright, P112F. We looked that one up already, so that's a repeat code. P0171, we just looked that one up. 112F. Okay, so it's got two major codes. I don't know how I didn't notice that to begin with. Let's go ahead and erase it and see what sticks around. All of them. Yeah, see, this is, this is major stuff that needs to be taken care of. This car will not pass inspection like this. So probably not looking too good for this dealership and me recommending this vehicle to my customer. Unfortunate, because I know my customer has been looking for a vehicle for a couple weeks. Um, if you remember, well, shoot, I haven't uploaded that video yet because I'm still behind on editing. Uh, but before this video comes out, there will be a video of uh, Navigator. So by the time you see this, that video should have already been posted. That's for the same customer. So that Navigator did not pass my inspection. I did not recommend that vehicle to my customer. Uh, so they've been continually looking for a vehicle since then. Um, and they found this one. Um, but again, I'm, I'm not going to be able to recommend a vehicle that has a bunch of error codes and a bunch of flashing warnings. Uh, I, just, I just can't do it. You know, I don't want to be blamed for uh, why they bought a car and, you know, I should have told them not to and no, this is not a car I would buy. Alright, so we will continue doing the um, inspection, you know, for all intents and purposes. We're going to look at the engine, um, take a look at it. Uh, we'll see how bad that vacuum leak is. And uh, but already with having to be replacing the catalytic converters and the O2 sensors, you're probably already over a thousand, two thousand uh, dollars in repairs. So unless you're getting this car for an absolute steal, uh, it just wouldn't make sense. So and even then, you may still have issues because the vehicle is a little bit older. So this is a 2013, um, which. I mean, my, my truck's a year older and doesn't have nearly as many issues as this car does. But anyways, let's move on to the engine. That was one thing I really did want to look at. I love sunroofs, and this is a huge sunroof. That is a plus point for me. I like that. So, we got our hood pops. Sorry about the loud noise with the airplanes. Uh, right off the bat, it sounds terrible. Engine is definitely vibrating. Got an oil leak. Hear that? Got a knock to it. That is detrimental. Nope. This would be a lemon all day long. You know, and, and just in case you didn't know, BMWs are like the number one vehicle found on flatbeds, tow trucks. Um, they are not reliable. And, and this one, I can almost guarantee you why, because number one, they don't have a dipstick. 
You can't even check your oil. You have to rely on your sensors to tell you when to change the oil. And uh, also on one of those error codes, it did recommend that that, that was a error code for an oil change also. Um, so look at this. Look at this oil, how dark it is. I don't know if you can tell, but that is super dark. Should have had an oil change a long time ago. You know, BMW messes up too and they tell people, oh, you only have to get an oil change once a year. Well, that's also why you see them up on flatbeds so often because people think they only need to change their oil once a year. It depends on your mileage. They're basing that statement on average usage um, in the U.S. So the average consumer drives 10 to 12,000 miles per year. Well, if you use Mobile One like they suggest, the extended uh, extended mileage version, they, they claim that you can get 10,000 miles. But I know that's not true because I tried that in my truck. I tried that oil in my truck and it didn't last 1,000 miles before that oil was dark. And ever since I switched back to STP full synthetic with the Lucas Oil Stabilizer, um, I make it to 3,500 miles before my oil even starts to turn colors. So... Uh, this one is going to be a thumbs down for me. I don't, I don't really care how much they're selling it for. They could sell it for a thousand bucks, and I still wouldn't want it. Um, when you hear that knocking in the engine, that's a bad sign. So, unfortunately for my customer, uh, I won't be giving the recommendation to buy this vehicle. Um, but fortunately for them, they hired someone like me to come out here and look at the vehicle before they even come out. Um, so I'm going to call him and let him know that uh, this car is not one that he even wants to waste his time to come out and look at. Um, it's got the check engine light right there, so uh, you won't be able to pass state inspection with this vehicle. You're going to have to do way too much work uh, to get it to pass inspection. You're going to have to repair the catalytic converters, the O2 sensors, the knock in the engine, the oils. Uh, it's got an oil leak somewhere. Uh, you're talking probably in the neighborhood of three, four thousand dollars of repairs, minimum, minimum. And EVAP system was uh, warnings, uh, flashing warnings too. Uh, EVAP systems can cost all the way upwards about two thousand dollars to repair the entire e uh, EVAP system. So that puts you up at you know five, six thousand uh, dollars of repairs. Um, I just don't see it being a, a reasonable vehicle for my customer. So. We're not going to test drive this one. It has too many issues. It's not going to be safe. I don't want it to break down on me on the road. So, um, yeah. Let me know what you think down below in the comments. Catch you on the next one.